In this video, we will do another example with three overlapping sets. So the example says in a survey of 2000 undergraduates, 879 eat at In-N-Out, 986 eat at Taco Bell, 732 eat at Subway, 1591 eat at In-N-Out or Taco Bell, 1510 eat at Taco Bell or Subway, 1348 eat at In-N-Out or Subway, 58 eat at L3, and 90 eat at none of them. What percent of undergrads eats food of at most one restaurant? So I want to begin by giving you all the opportunity to try this question. So pause the video for four minutes to try this question on your own first. Four, three, two, one, pause the video. Pause it for four minutes, for four minutes, sorry, to try this question on your own. That may not be enough time to finish the question, but that's okay. I mostly want you to be thinking about what are the key ideas? How would I begin? All right, so hopefully you've done that. Hopefully you've paused the video for four minutes to try this. If not, go ahead and do that now. That is super important. Okay, so let's, let's talk about it together. So we can get started by labeling uh, the sets. So we can assign some, assign some letters to each of the sets. So maybe we can let I represent the set of people who eat in and out. We can let T be the set of people who eat Taco Bell and S be the set of people who eat Subway. All right, and then we can make a Venn diagram. So make a Venn diagram. So I'm going to zoom it out a little bit so I can still see these numbers, but while starting my picture. So let's make a Venn diagram. All right, so we can draw a circle for I for in and out a circle for T for Taco Bell, and for S for Subway, and then all within a rectangle that represents our universal set of all the undergrads who are surveyed. And I'm going to start inside out, as we often do with these. Start inside out. And the question tells me, well, there's 58 that eat at all three. So I know that 58 is the number that's going to go here in the very middle. And I can also quickly label one other region. It tells me that 90 eat at none of them, which means 90 is going to be that value that goes outside all three circles. So now I'm going to work on these other missing regions uh, that are in the intersections of two of the circles. Okay, so how do I fill out the numbers that go in those spots? So I'm interested in something about these intersections and what the question tells me information about how much is in unions. Like it tells me that 1510, for example, eat at Taco Bell or Subway. So that's the number of people in the union of Taco Bell and Subway, in the T circle or in the S circle combined. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, seeing that it gives me information about unions, is to use the union formula that we have. So for example, if I do that with the number of elements in I union T in and out or in Taco Bell, our formula for this was it's the number of elements in I plus the number of elements in T, but that over accounts, it over accounts the intersection of the two circles. It counts it twice actually, so I have to subtract it. So the number of elements in I intersect T, I have to subtract that. And now let's fill out everything that we know here. So the number of people who eat at In-N-Out or Taco Bell, the question told us, I think it's 1591 eat at In-N-Out or Taco Bell. All right, so 1591 goes here. It told us how many eat at In-N-Out. 
879. And it told us how many eat at Taco Bell. That was 986. And then I get minus the number in the intersection. So that's the number who eat at both in and out and Taco Bell. So if we rearrange this a little bit, we get, if I move the negative N of I intersect T to the left, it becomes positive. And then if I add these two numbers together, I end up getting 1865. And if I subtract 1591 over to the right hand side, we will end up with 274. So that's how many total people should be in the intersection of the I and T circles. So that's going to help me figure out what this missing number here is. I'm going to, I'm going to call it X. Okay, so if I focus on that intersection, I'm going to use an implication arrow. X added to 58, that should be equal to the number of people in the intersection, which is 274. And if I subtract 58, on both sides, we get x equals 216. So now I know what number goes in that, in that blank. Let's zoom it in a bit so I can write this more easily. I know x, whoops, x equals 216. So I can do the same sort of thing for these other unions. Okay, so maybe let's do, let's focus on the number of people in the union of t or s next. Using my formula for unions, this will be the number of people in T plus the number of people in S minus the number of people in the intersection because that gets counted twice. And if I fill out the values that I have here, the number of people who eat at Taco Bell or Subway is 1,510. The number who eat at Taco Bell I saw earlier, that was 986. The problem told me how many eat at Subway, 732 and then minus n of t intersected with s. If I move the terms around here, we'll get n of t intersected with s equals, this ends up giving us 208, 208. So if I do the same type of thing to figure out this missing portion of the intersection of t and s, maybe I'll call that y this time. We know that, oh, okay, I need a little bit of room here. I know that if I add y to the 58, that should tell me, that should give us 208. That's the number of people that are supposed to be in that intersection. And if I subtract 58, we get y equals 150. So that's the value that goes here. It is y equals 150, 150. All right, so next I can do the inner, sorry, the union of I and S, so the number of elements in the union of I and S. That will be equal to the number of elements in I, number of people who like in and out, plus the number of people in S, minus the number of people in I intersected with S. And if I fill out the values for these uh, different areas, we get, so the number of people who like in and out or subway, it's 1348. The number of people who like In-N-Out is 879. Number of people who like Subway, 732. And then minus N of I intersected with S. If we rearrange this, I'll get the number of people in I intersected with S equals 263. Okay, so if I focus on the intersection of I and S, I know that 58 is part of it, and there's this other portion to it, which I'm going to call z, and I want to know what z equals. So at this point, I do know that z added to 58, let's put an implication arrow here, that should give us 263, the number of people in that intersection. And if I isolate the z, we get z equals 205. So z is equal to 205. All right, so I've copied down some of the values from the problem. So for example, the problem told me that 879 people like in and out So if I focus on that in and out circle, and I put a variable here like A for this missing region. So if I focus on I, the in and out circle, and I add up all the values in that circle, we'll get A 
plus 216 plus 58 plus 205. Well, that should add up to the number of people who like in and out which is 879. And if I solve for A, if I subtract all the other terms over, we'll get A equals 400. Oh, because that's a nice, a nice round number. That's kind of nice. Okay, let's do Taco Bell. Uh, so if I call the missing value, ooh, now let's label this. A is 400. Maybe if I call the missing region in the Taco Bell circle B, and I add up the values in T circle, we get B plus 216 plus 58, plus 150, and that equals 986, because that's how many people like Taco Bell overall. If we solve for B, we end up getting 562. So B is 562. And if I do the same thing for the S circle for subway, and I put a C here for this missing region, and I add all the values in the subway circle, we get C plus 205 plus 58 plus 150 equals there are 732 people who like subway total and if I solve for C we get C equals 319 all right so this C is 319 I have all the different sections labeled with numbers so that's great we are ready to answer what the question asked for which was, what is the percentage that eats at, at most one of these food joints, one of these restaurants, at most one of them? So if I want to count the percentage, well, I would need to count the number. So I'm going to just put a hashtag symbol for the number. Number, oh, oops, number of people eating at most one restaurant and divide that by the total number of people by the total number of people so let's start with the total number of people for the total number I could add up all of these values that I have here but the question actually told me how many total people there were supposed to be here's the problem it tells me there's 200 Oh, sorry, 2,000 undergrads. It's a good idea to add up all of these numbers just to make sure it does equal 2,000, but it turns out it does. So there's 2,000 total people. So on the numerator, I need to count the number that eats at, at most one restaurant. So what are the sections that correspond to eating at most one restaurant? Well, these 400 eat just at In-N-Out, so they eat at, at most one. The 562 eat just at Taco Bell. The 319 eat at just Subway. And the 90 eat at none of the restaurants, and that's that constitutes at most one. But all of these other numbers, like 216, eat at two of them. They eat at In-N-Out and, what is it, Taco Bell, I think. Uh, 205 eat at two, the 150 eat at two, and the 58 eat at three, so we definitely don't want to count those. Okay, so on the numerator, I should be putting 400 plus 562 plus 319 plus 90. And working out this, we get 1371 on the top, over 2000. And I need to write this as a percentage, so let's first write this as a decimal. This is 0 0.6855, which as a percentage, what I need to do is we multiply by 100 to convert it to a percent. Multiply by 100 to convert a decimal to a percentage. And if we do that, we move the decimal spot over to the right two, two places. So this is 68.55%. And that's my answer. That's the percentage of undergrads who eat at, at most one restaurant. All right, so I wanna end this video with two short remarks. So the first thing that I wanna note is in Edfinity with the online homework, when you have problems where you need to round your answer because of a bunch of decimal places, it's a good idea to include at least four decimal places to avoid rounding errors.
Sometimes if you don't include enough decimal places, Edfinity won't think your answer is close to close enough to the actual value. And the other thing that I want to end this video with is kind of a question. Uh, and the question is, well, we looked at, in a sense, how to count the number of elements in a union of three sets when we've had these three overlapping sets. And we've seen that there's a formula for the number of elements in a union of two sets, the number of elements in A union B. So the natural question is, is there a formula for the number of elements in a union of three sets or, or more than three sets? And the answer is yes. And we use, it turns out it's, it's similar to the other one in that there's over, uh, there are regions that ended, ended up getting counted uh, multiple times and you have to adjust for that over counting. And the technique is called the principle of inclusion, inclusion, exclusion. It's beyond the scope of our class, but I just want to mention it to tell you that there is a way to do it. We use the principle of inclusion, exclusion. And this is something that you might see in a discrete math course. Or, or maybe a, what's called a combinatorics course. Combinatorics has to do with uh, the math of counting at different objects. So this is beyond the scope of our class. So we won't talk about it. Scope of our class. The way we will handle it is with these Venn diagrams. So in terms of our goals for this section, we finished our last goal. How to count the number of elements in a set in situations where we have three overlapping sets. 